One of the key distinctions between Christian doctrine and the anti-Christian doctrines of the new apostolic reformation can be found within what NAR leaders refer to as kingdom theology. According to the Christian interpretation of this theology, human history is divided into two distinct periods, the present age, often referred to as the present evil age, and the age to come. Satan is viewed as the ruler of the current age, as outlined in Ephesians chapters 2 and 6, while the age to come is marked by Christ's return and the establishment of God's kingdom. In this Christian perspective, it is God who will restore peace when he begins his reign over all creation. The NAR version of kingdom theology significantly differs from the traditional Christian interpretation, incorporating several extra-biblical ideas that obscure the distinctions between the present age, the age to come, and the identity of the one who will establish the kingdom. NAR leaders assert that Christians must engage in spiritual warfare to overthrow current systems. This radical interpretation has given rise to several other heretical and unbiblical theologies, such as Kingdom Now Theology and Dominion Theology. How did the NAR develop such different interpretations of the doctrine compared to other Christians? Where did NAR Kingdom Theology originate? To find out, we must examine a little-known history of Kingdom Theology in the early 20th century, and how that theology made its way into the latter reign movement and eventually the NAR. After the Ku Klux Klan was exposed as a domestic terrorist organization in the early 1920s, several leaders from the 1915 Klan began to establish competing white supremacy organizations. Some of these organizations were religious groups that promoted the same agendas under the guise of Christianity. One such organization was the Supreme Kingdom, founded by former imperial wizard Edward Young Clark. Clark had been ousted from the Klan after violating the Mann Act, which included charges of sexually abusing underage women. The group embraced hyperfundamentalism and Christian identity doctrines, which had roots in British Israelism, and was organized to eliminate proponents of evolution, atheism, and revolution from politics and schools. One of Clark's initial actions was to conduct a widespread interrogation of all teachers, professors, and ministers in Georgia, which led to a motion that forced several Georgia teachers to resign. To those familiar with the NAR Seven Mountain Mandate, Clark had established a religious organization specifically to conquer multiple of the so-called mountains. The group consisted of several key figures that were integral to the development of core doctrines of latter rain. Evansville native and pastor of Manhattan's Calvary Baptist Church, John Roach Straton, was a member until the Board of Trustees demanded that Straton explain the Supreme Kingdom's agenda. Ridley, former Supreme Religious Chaplain of the Klan, was also a leading member of the group. Roy Davis, a former Klan spokesperson who mentored Branham in the Faith Healing Revival circuits prior to Latter Rain, and William Upshaw, a former congressman who toured with Branham during Latter Rain, were both closely affiliated. Although the group was short-lived and has become a forgotten aspect of seemingly unimportant history, the influence of the Supreme Kingdom is significant to the history of the NAR. It was discovered that Straton was being paid $30,000, which would be equivalent to over half a billion dollars in 2024. Like the Ku Klux Klan, the Supreme Kingdom presented itself as a Christian organization. Many of the group's agendas were more political than religious. At the time of its inception, the Supreme Kingdom's influence on the education system was closely aligned with politics and appeared to be financed by politicians. In 1928, it was suspected that Clark had received $100,000 from the Republican Committee. Clark initially denied the allegations. However, as the years progressed and the actions of men affiliated with him became public, the erosion of the separation between church and state became apparent. While Clark collaborated with politicians to secure funding for the organization, Caleb Ridley leveraged his status as the former supreme religious chaplain of the Klan to attract new members via revival circuits. A timely name change from the original Supreme Kingdom Shrine, which had been in direct competition with the Mystic Shrine of North America, proved advantageous. 
After an injunction prevented Clark, Ridley, and others from using the term shrine, they adopted the simplified supreme kingdom. At the same time, a variant of kingdom theology had caused a growing debate between evangelical and liberal Christians. Liberals interpreted this theology as envisioning a world of ideal human relationships aimed at creating a perfect Christian society. Given their views on evolution, liberal Christians were the primary targets of the group. However, it also proved beneficial and profitable to engage evangelical Christians. Roy Davis founded a new religious organization targeting several Christian denominations, which he named the Pentecostal Baptist Church of God. Davis held revivals to draw new converts to their political ideologies and invited ranking members of the Supreme Kingdom to speak. Using this denomination as a breeding ground for new recruits, Davis invited Caleb Ridley to speak at these events. They made sure to advertise their affiliation with William Jennings Bryan, a prominent political figure in the anti-evolution movement, who was part of their revival circuit until his death in 1925. In 1921, attempts by Ridley and other leaders to organize meetings in Louisville faced challenges south of the Ohio River. As a result, they chose to hold their gatherings at the Armory in Jeffersonville, where Davis and Jeffersonville Mayor's son Ralph Rader would later conduct healing revivals. Shortly thereafter, a clan headquarters was set up in Jeffersonville, with Branham's father-in-law tasked with its security. Branham, an Indiana minister and leader of the latter Rain revivals, played a key role in promoting what would become known as NAR Kingdom Theology. During these revivals, Branham publicly declared his lifelong debt to the Ku Klux Klan following an incident in Jeffersonville, Indiana, where the local Klan branch had been established by Caleb Ridley. During a war between the Jeffersonville mob and the Klan, Branham was shot and critically injured. His father was arrested for producing liquor for the mob, and according to Branham, he was helping his father. When the Klan paid his hospital bill, Branham became a crucial ally to the movement spearheaded by Ridley and Davis. Interestingly, in the latter Rain revivals, Branham attempted to conceal this history in his life story accounts by incorrectly describing Davis' religious sect as Baptist and by claiming his conversion happened over a decade later. Edward Clark, Caleb Ridley, Roy Davis, William Upshaw, and others were successful in establishing their version of kingdom theology, although this did not occur through the Supreme Kingdom movement. As the Supreme Kingdom began to fade away, new organizations emerged, each created by, collaborating with, or influenced by the group's agenda. Some of these organizations, such as the defenders of the Christian faith led by Gerald Burton Winrod, Charles Fuller, Paul Rader, and others, gave rise to institutions that were instrumental in the formation of the New Apostolic Reformation. In fact, the term New Apostolic Reformation itself originated with C. Peter Wagner, a professor at Fuller Theological Seminary School of World Missions. Wagner worked closely with John Wimber, the founding director of the Department of Church Growth at Fuller and the bridge between the NAR and latter rain versions of Kingdom Theology.